So, let's talk about the elephant in the room, water makers. For years, we have been going back and forth with the idea of installing a water maker aboard Avocet. And as we got closer to our cast off date, we spoke with fellow cruisers and we decided it would be in our best interest to install one aboard our boat. Before we get too deep into this, water maker is the term for desalination unit, which is a system that allows us to take salt water and transform it into delicious fresh water. If you have watched any of our other project videos, you know how much research goes into every project we do. And this is no exception. There are a lot of water maker units out there and it can be hard to find what's right for your wants and vessel needs. This will not be one size fits all or a step-by-step -step installation guide, but rather hopefully a helpful example of how we decided on a system and installed it aboard our 1970s cruising boat. So let's get into it. When it comes to water makers, there are two popular options. AC and DC electric units. The AC unit is popular due to its high freshwater output per hour, but also uses a lot of energy. The DC unit makes a lot less water per hour, but uses a lot less energy, thus being more attractive to the energy conscious boater. On Avocet, we have a 380 amp hour lithium battery bank that is fed by our 670 watt solar array. We set our boat up this way to avoid running our diesel engine to meet our daily power needs. And when choosing our water maker, we wanted to keep power consumption minimal in respect to our daily solar input. So what we have here is a... A Rain Man water maker but more specifically, a DC Rain Man water maker. What's really cool about this moderately low power unit is that it's module and can be separated in its entirety to better conform to the weird spaces you find aboard your boat, which we think will make this a relatable video for other DIYers like ourselves. So what we have on the table is the membrane, the pressure supply unit, a couple hoses here and there, and all the bits and bobs it connects it to. And that is the DC Naked RO kit. What we also have on the table, the control panel and the freshwater auto flush. Those two things are optional upgrades and make the whole water maker in general less maintenance and more of a plug and play solution. Having the auto flush allows us to leave the boat in marinas where the water isn't suitable for desalination and not have to pickle it. With that being said, there is clearly a lot of pieces here and we really need to figure out where it's going to go. So I think we should just get started. <laughs> First thing we got to do is just figure out where we're going to put all these giant pieces of machinery. I'm sitting right now in our aft stateroom and this is going to be where most of the things are going to be located for a couple reasons. Right in front of me, about two feet in front of me, is where the through hole intake for the water maker is. Behind me is where our batteries are, which are right underneath our bed. It's a very general location for where the power is coming from and where the water is coming from. I think I figured out where I'm going to put the control panel which is right behind me where the socket is. I'm gonna relocate the socket and put the panel right here. Included with the control panel is this nice little template they give you because you can either mount it two ways. Uh, one way is with the box they give you and you can glue that in somewhere, you can screw it into something or you can flush mount just the panel. And I've pretty much decided that that's our best option. The control panel is something you wanna keep an eye on, especially when you're making water. TDS uh, little LED on it is telling you the salinity of the water and if it's good to put in your tanks or not. So if there's any change while you're making water, you should be able to see it at a glance versus having to, let's say, remove like a cupboard or something to get at the panel. It's also nice that it's going here because everything's very close to each other. The batteries are underneath the bed and the motor is just right across the way. So it's really nice, uh, close connections to everything. And I'm going to do the scary part, which is measure a couple more times and then make this cut. Chris was trying to install it there, but I had a epiphany that we used to have batteries that lived there. And this is a big space, which could definitely fit a water maker. So after some relocation, I think it's at least the motor is gonna go in there. And then all the pre-filters and all the stuff can also go in there too. All right, well, the spot is gonna work very nicely. Marissa, she wins on the location. 
now that this is in here, I'm kind of getting excited. It looks like it's going to fit nicely in here. <clears throat> it's a heavy little pump. <laughs> Not so little either. So when mounting this motor, there's a few things you need to take into consideration. Number one, you need to be able to maintenance it. And the two things on this motor slash pressure pump is the impeller, which is located on the front. That is the boost pump that circulates all of the water from the seacocks through the pre-filters and into the pressure pump. And the pressure pump, not only do you need to access the side for the oil sight glass, so you can keep an eye on how much oil is inside of the pump, but you also need to be able to drain it all and give it an oil change when that is necessary. Uh, this motor is quite interesting in that it's on a very cool Rain Man specific tray where you could pop off the sides without having to unscrew the base mount, the whole motor can be lifted out of place. And that is that is very cool, but I'm still gonna try to mount this in this area right here in a way that I can get to both the oil gauge and also the impeller without having to dismantle anything. With the control panel and pump locations decided, the last piece of the puzzle was to determine the home for the membrane. With this water maker being so modular, we were able to mount the membrane in an otherwise useless space next to our steering components far up out of the way to go unnoticed in terms of storage capacity. With the three main pieces of the unit installed, we could move on to the fun part, running hose, pecs, and wires all throughout the boat. At first, I was very skeptical that the supplied pressure lines in between the control panel and the PSU and the PSU and the membrane would come up short. But even in our situation where we mounted all three pieces somewhat far from each other, we still had plenty of slack in the high pressure hoses. Due to Randman using all of these push fit snap connecting pieces for all of the pecs, it makes it a breeze installing it. So all you gotta do is cut to the right length. So far we've already lucked out tremendously that all of the supplied hoses Rain Man has given us have been the right length. So that's really awesome. So it's just a fun part now of plugging all the stuff in. Another thing Rain Man did that just works nicely is that they supplied you with pretty much all of the hardware you're gonna need. And they put it on these nice little packets. So this says the front panel, pretty self-explanatory. So you're not guessing what screws go to what. It is very much so a uh, so easy, an idiot can do it. So now that I have pretty much all the connections made to the back of the panel, I am installing it, uh, hopefully for the last time. I have really good access to the back of this panel through the other side over here. So even if I need to get to something over there, uh, I can still do it without having to take this thing down. This yellow PEX that I'm running right now is for the pre-filter pressure gauge. Uh, this is gonna show that we have proper pressure when it comes to the water going through the pre-filters. Um, if there's improper pressure, you either have a clog somewhere in the line or a filter is uh, clogged up with debris. So this is a good thing to keep an eye on when we're running this thing. Once we had the Rain Man connected together, the last step of the installation was on the raw water side. That is everything between the through hole and the boost pump on the PSU, which includes in our installation, a strainer and two micro pre-filters. The final step was to wire the motor to the battery and supply 12 volt power to the control panel. You probably noticed the three outfit changes that happened throughout this video. That's because we installed this unit over the span of four months on our sail from Ventura to San Francisco and back. Although it only took a total of three days to install, there was never a great time to test it since the waters we encountered in the bay and while cruising down the coast were less than ideal. Thankfully, we didn't need to use the water maker until our last anchorage before leaving for Mexico. So I'm taking all of our cockpit lockers apart because I gotta get out our membrane, which is located up underneath our cockpit sole. 
So all the stuff has to come out, obviously. Um, but not only will I check out our membrane while I'm down there, but I'll check out our steering system. It hasn't been double checked since we left the dock, so be a good time to go down there and make sure everything's where it should be. But I am uh, very close. All I gotta do the water maker to make it ready to go is put two of the pre-filters in the um, raw water side and that's it, kick it on. Now I have everything installed and properly put in. I haven't really run through the system with you yet to show you how we ran it or how I installed it. Um, the membrane is up underneath our cockpit sole. The PSU, the pressure supply unit, is underneath our steps. The control panel is in our bedroom. And all of the raw water intake and the pre-filters uh, takes up from this closet right here is the, where the through hole's at. And then it goes down to our uh, pre-filters right here. So I did that intentionally because I didn't want to get salt water everywhere uh, when I decided to change pre-filters. And when I do decide to change them, it's okay to get salt water into the bilge and pump it right out. Um, but the next steps for us to do right now are just to put those pre-filters in. I haven't had them in yet because I haven't needed to use the unit, but um, it should be pretty simple. So let me walk you through where I keep all of the water maker stuff. So up underneath our steps is sort of where all of our tools live and where a lot of my video gear lives, but it's also where the water maker pressure supply unit is it's up underneath this main step. This is where our old batteries used to live when we bought out a set. We decided to move them up underneath our bed for a couple of reasons. The main being if we ever got a large green wave into the cockpit, we run the risk of it coming down steps and onto our batteries. So that was less than ideal. Obviously it wouldn't be good to have our water maker get flooded either, but it's better than losing all power. This is a good spot for not only the pump, but also all of the stuff that we need to keep on board for the water maker, like pre-filters and pickling solution and all that stuff. Um, it's also where we have the three-way valve. All I have to do to pickle this entire unit is just flip this lever up like that. And now it, uh, the pressure supply unit takes in its raw water from this barb valve. And I can hook a little hose up to that with a bucket of brine solution, run it through the whole system, and ipso facto, it is pickled. But that's not why we are in here right now. Right now, I'm looking for the pre-filters that I'm gonna put in so we can run this thing for the first time. Uh, I decided to do two pre-filters. Rain Man supplies you with one, and through my research and even the ones that I've installed in the past, the water makers, I like having two pre-filters. One is a 20 micron, and then it goes down to a five micron, and the reason being is that um, the 20 micron can kind of take the big chunks out before setting it over to the five micron. Uh, if you have one pre-filter and you're in a really uh, sedimentary area where there's a lot of sediment in the water, um, you can chalk up that filter and then it's bad obviously if you run this pump dry. It's not what you want to do. So underneath our floorboards is where the magic happens in terms of the raw water. So the first thing that the hose goes to from the through hole is this strainer. It's a Groco normal standard strainer. Uh, from there it goes to a T. This T goes over to our salt water foot pump in the, in the galley. After the T it goes straight into our 20 micron filter and then after the 20 micron is a 5 micron. So I'm just gonna screw on these pre-filters and prime the system and get ready to start the unit for the first time. Sit, guys. With the filters in, I'm going to open the seacock, let the raw water into the boat. I'm letting the five micron cracked open slightly so I can uh, bleed the system and get as much water into the lines as possible before it goes up to the pressure supply unit. And that will bleed over now into the five. There it is. All right, that is now fully bled. Only thing left to do now is hit the on button. I'm gonna turn our Y valve from pickling over to the through hole, just like this, like that. Now that's taking the raw water from those strainers up to this uh, Y valve and then directly into the uh, pressure supply unit. And the last thing I'm going to do is hit on our breaker. This is in between the panel and the pressure supply unit as a last fail safe. All right, we are ready to turn on. However, let me just run through a couple things with you. Uh, it's not gonna make water immediately. It's gonna take at least one to three minutes, hopefully to run out all of the air bubbles that are inside of the PSU and the membranes. That happens when you are installing these units and you have a little bit of air pockets inside of the raw water supply. 
Uh, and the second thing is that you have to run it for at least 30 minutes to run out all of the brine solution that's inside of the membranes when you get it from Rain Man. So at least 30 to 45 minutes, I would say right now before we're making water. However, we are in the steps of turning it on and making water. Making sure that this pressure valve is all the way anti-clockwise before you start. The divert from the tank to the test is on divert and you're gonna hit one. I should be able to start increasing pressure. We're no longer getting any air bubbles, which is good. water yet like I said we're still running all the brine solution out of the system but we're up to pressure which is good and we have the diver going to the right faucet which is also good so uh, so far success it is not as loud as I could be it's also not quiet but it's only pulling about 30 amps which is awesome so I can completely offset it with, with the solar power we have going in right now which is exactly what I wanted So you can hear the water maker running in the background and right here in front of me is the test spigot which is right next to our salt water spigot, not to be confused. Um, it's spitting out some fresh water now, it's been 30 minutes so it's the moment of truth. Had to pull out the real fancy glasses for this one. Ready? Bottoms up. Oh yeah. That tastes great. Tastes like water. <laughs> Tastes awesome. Tastes like no taste to it. Yeah, that's. I think that's what's weird. It has no taste. It's really good though. It's really good. All right, now that's been running for 30 minutes. We tasted it. it. Tastes good. The TDS light is green. It's time to put this water into the tanks. So all I got to do is come down here to the control panel and flip it over to the tank. Now that water's going straight into our starboard tank and only the starboard tank. I have the port not connected to the system at all in case anything were to happen with the uh, water maker. If it started putting bad water into a tank, it only would contaminate one. So we'll let that run for a little while. Uh, look at our gauge. We weren't in really need of water, but we needed to try out the water maker before it went to Mexico. So, so far it is a whopping success. Been running for about two hours, made some water, filled up our tank, and I'm just gonna go through the procedures of turning it off. So first thing you want to do is flip it from the tank to the divert. So for us, that's sending it back to the sink. You should see it here in a second. There it is. And then slowly decrease pressure on your uh, pressure valve here. Once that is all the way bottomed out, I can hit off. Just like that, we're done. Since we installed our Rain Man, we have sailed over 2,000 miles and made over 1,000 gallons of water. We have had zero issues and have enjoyed the experience of using the control panel, the freshwater rinse while in marinas, and the easy pickling setup. With our 670 watts of solar, we are able to directly offset the power consumed from the water maker with the power of the sun, making a respective nine to 10 gallons of fresh water per hour. This is a perfect blend in my opinion of high water output and relatively low power consumption. In summary, we are thrilled with our decision to install a Rain Man aboard Avocet. Its modular unit made the install process easy, the maintenance is straightforward, the power draw and gallons per hour are perfect for our consumption, and their customer service is top notch. If you're looking to install a water maker aboard your vessel, we hope you found this video helpful. Head up our bow is in Sonata, baby. We're in fucking Mexico. Right, we are coming through the Marina Corral Breakwater here in Sonata.